as you can see, we're all loaded up. <laughs> you can't see out the back window at all. Um, we've already <laughs> made some verbal ideas of modifications we need to do to our setup because it's crazy packed in here and if we just change a few things I'm sure that we could uh, utilize the back of the truck a little more. And that's the only way we're gonna ever get the dogs on a trip with us. Yeah, um, they're definitely not fitting in here. <laughs> so this is day one of our wheeling and camping weekend. We are actually headed up to um, Bridgeton, Michigan today, and we're gonna visit with some family, camp on uh, some of Witt's family's property, and um, it'll probably be a pretty quiet day as far as the video goes, but we'll see. We'll see what we get into. Tomorrow, we will be heading to St. Helen, and that's when the real trip starts. Um, that's when we will meet up with other members of our group, start doing some light wheeling, and get our camping set up for the rest of the weekend. Okay, so we stopped before getting on the expressway for a quick restroom break and to check out our tarps and stuff. Under the white we've got coolers, um, and so we've got the coolers, we've got a blanket on top of them, and then we've got the white tarp that'll keep them not only dry, but it'll keep the sun off of them and hopefully help the ice last a little longer because we don't have those high dollar Yetis. We've got like $5 garage sale coolers. And then under there we've got our camp kitchen and our recovery gear. Those bins aren't yet um, waterproof bins. They're just cheap bins we had, so we wrapped them as well. And we've got some muck boots on each side, a pair for me, a pair for her. Uh, we just wanted to verify that the... Um, the tarps were going to hold up before we hit 70 miles an hour, and they seem to be doing all right. So, I think we're good to go. We'll let you know in a few hours if it worked. So usually when we go up to Bridgeton, we tend to take um, highways all the way because it's a three and a half hour drive, and uh, mapping shows a certain route that seems to be about the quickest, and it's like up on U.S. interstates and such, and it's, there are parts that aren't so pleasant. But today we stopped at Meyer to get our RV trail tags, and I thought, you know what, I wonder if there's a back way that could get us there without going through 131 in Grand Rapids in this Jeep, because that's probably one of the few places where I really just don't like driving, is right through downtown Grand Rapids on 131. So we did, and instead of a U.S. interstate, four lanes wide, and nothing really to see, we've been on this back road, I believe it's M37, um, and it's actually, M37 is one of the roads we have to be on much later, so kind of neat little, uh, we're just taking the road we need to be on, and it's so much more beautiful than the interstate, so... I'm counting this as the beginning of our overlanding. We're exploring territory we haven't been on before. And seeing the countryside. It's still pavement, but it's something new. And it's a lot nicer than the interstate. That's the truth. One of the things I love about Michigan is trees galore. There are trees everywhere. Driving down roads where the trees just overhang. And, hmm. Honestly, Michigan is a beautiful state. Uh, the politics are questionable, but the state is beautiful. It really is. So, for future overlanding information. Don't get a huge family size tent that takes forever to set up. <laughs> it's been like 10 minutes. It's felt like an eternity. But it's here and 
The river's down there. And just look how beautiful this property is. Just absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to set up a little fire here tonight. Should be a lot of fun. Hey guys. <laughs> Excuse the uh, freaky lighting. Um, we're out here in the tent. Obviously, I am falling into my cot because apparently we uh, have never comfort tested this cot and it doesn't hold up super well. <laughs> this has me confused. I'm pretty sure we got that cot because she didn't like my cot and she wanted something that was comfortable. So I thought we tested it, but apparently not. Apparently we did not because uh, it's going to be fun getting out of this cot. It's sunk. It's, uh, the, the cot that Wit has is like a military style cot that's super rigid, and I did not want that. That was super uncomfortable. I think we bought this because it looked all padded and nice, and in some ways, I think it will be very nice. Getting out of it, probably not going to be an easy thing to do. I don't know. Um, there are several things we've learned from this trip already, and let me just preface by saying we started the day on the video in the morning, and now it's dark out. Um, but we were at families, visiting with family, playing with kids, and um, in the process of setting up the tent, we did learn a few things for the future. Um, one of them might be now, I guess, possibly that uh, we need to get rid of her cot and maybe just get an air mattress for us or something. Uh, we had already kind of discussed that a little bit because the two cots in the Jeep just took up a lot of room. Mine doesn't. Um, hers does. Yours takes up a lot of room too. Mine takes up like a quarter of what yours does. This is true, but still. <laughs> um, so an air mattress would take up less room well, um, for packing. It would definitely make things easier. Yeah, and it would probably make it easier to do maybe a smaller tent or something. This thing is large, but then again, we're large people. Uh, <laughs> and we have at big six cots. foot five, <laughs> I think that's why we got this one. Actually, it was closeout um, at the time, but it was also one that I could almost stand up in. And usually, they come up to like my nipple, so I'm happy for a tent I can almost stand up in. I mean, my dream would be one of those Cabela's big military style ones that's like enormous because I'd be able to stand in it. But, but then we'd have to set that up. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> sound fun for just a night. Um, but a few other things we learned along the way, like one, we brought trash bags. They are wrapped in that tarp, which, by the way, did make it down the highway of 70 miles an hour for almost four hours. Um... It did great, uh, but now it's supposed to rain tonight, and I don't want to unwrap it, because in the morning we're going to have to already be putting away our tents and stuff in the rain, and then, don't worry, we're going to have to pull them back out later to tomorrow night uh, to set back up, so it's not like they're going to sit there wet, but I don't want to be messing with tarping up all the gear in the back and all of that while we're in the middle of that rain so uh that does change a few things like the trash bag if we had had a trash bag out at the beginning of the trip it might have been easier there were a few other things we figured out today do you remember any of them snacks i got accused of not thinking of my husband she when didn't. i was packing this stuff what? because all the snacks got buried i didn't pack the truck i packed the bag Wait, wait, wait. I was packing the truck while she was packing the food. And then she told me to put the bag of food between the two coolers when I tarped it. And I decided I didn't want to squish the pork rinds, so I actually stuck the bag in the back. And good thing I did, or I'd have been climbing out and untarping them just to get my one snack while she was chewing on the snack she had in her purse. Tell me, am I wrong? I'm a diabetic. I always carry a snack in my purse. That snack has been in my purse for, like... A month. <laughs> Aw, so you didn't even think of yourself on a snack? No. 
That's why I can't understand why you're like all offended about it. We'll see. I'm picking on you, but um, yeah, that's another thing. So snacks. Just we have snacks for road trips. We have water bottles that we had for road trips, and we didn't put them somewhere accessible. <laughs> well, we were able to get to the water bottles, but I almost took his head off doing it. <laughs> yep. So that is day one. Anything else you got, Jen? Um, no, I mean, overall, it was a fun day. We got to take a road that we don't normally get to take, um, see different things, and we got to spend some time with family, go swimming with some little kids, which is always fun. They, little, little children make life very interesting. <laughs> so, uh, we had dinner with family, and it was just a good time. It was. So tomorrow we pack up, we visit with a little more family, um, and then we head towards St. Helen. And in St. Helen, we'll start with the trail videos. Stay tuned. See you then. You know, the thunderstorm just now sounded really awesome from inside the tent. What didn't was a realization that we haven't had this tent out in six years and didn't think to pull it out a month ago and re-weatherproof the, the rain fly. It wasn't too bad. We were able to scramble and get our gear under the cots. I got a few pretty big drops on my back, but... For the most part, we're fairly dry considering what it sounds like outside. Thanks for watching, y'all. The Lord bless you and keep you. We'll see you tomorrow. I got nothing. <laughs>